Hey everybody, moving on to game number 19 and win with the closed Sicilian. This game is from Palma, 1989. And we have a great attacking player on the white side. And uh, Victor Kuprechik, uh, one of uh, one of the great dynamic uh, players in the spirit of uh, Tal and Valimerick. And with the black pieces, we have uh, Grandmaster Yuri Yakovich. Right, another great uh, player. And again, we are on the line starting with move six. F4 and Black's uh, most principal response, E6. So let's get right into it. E4, C5, Knight C3, Knight C6, G3, G6, Bishop G2, Bishop G7, D3, D6. And there it is, F4. E6, knight f3, knight g, e7, double castles, and bishop e3, okay. Yakovic plays b6. And uh, this move allows uh, white to get in d4. Um, common response is knight d4 right right away stopping that move and then you get queen d2 and so and uh and so on from um black uh, from white so b6 play and uh d4 he's letting you get the move in and uh so you take it i mean after all bishop e3 knight f3 you're all you're playing to get d4 in. all right now, if you deny, like if you don't want to, you know, play d4, uh, often what what happens is you wind up transposing anyway into the other lines. Like, for instance, say you just played this, then, you know, black can do stuff like that. So it's just probably best just to play d4. Bishop a6. Rook e1. Excuse me. Rook C eight. A four. Now C takes D four. Knight takes D four. And Knight A five. And we can see Black's idea. Putting a lot of pressure on the C file. Okay. Bishop F2, avoiding the double attack here and here. Where if black one, white wanted to keep the bishop here, he would have to go back to C1. And so now, if knight C4 here, then B3 can just simply kick it out. Okay. So, queen D7 is played. Queen to f3, bishop b7, opposing the queen, and now rook a d1. And now we can say that white has completed his development. Okay. a6, keeping horses off of, off of b5. And now, again, key word is white has completed his development. And Kuprechik is an attacking player. What do attacking players do after they they have completed their development? Is they start attacking. So G4. All right. And of course, in this system, F5 is a major um, theme. And so G4 is uh, preparing, continuing the preparation for the move f5 and we can see we had the knight on d4 with influence on that square the e pawn and the uh, f pawn ready to go e pawn and g pawn ready to go all right so now knight a c6 kuprachik avoids the trade here knight b3 knight b4 
And now bishop takes b6. So he trades the b pawn for the c pawn. Knight takes c2. Rook e2. And now knight a3. Of course, the idea being if uh, b takes a3, then you can grab this knight on c3. Play check plays bishop d4. Right, not willing to give up the initiative after b takes a3. Knight c4. And this is good for white. Getting rid of the dark square bishop. And now we see the thematic breakthrough. What I like about this move is he does it anyway with the queen in direct opposition to the bishop on um, b7. But you see this theme a lot in the closed Sicilian. The elimination of the dark square bishop. Where all these uh, this weakness is created in the dark, around the dark squares. Around the king. And then you see the move f5 coming in. And most of the time it's as a sacrifice. Because you can see black has pawns on e6. g6. Knight on e7. And queen on d7. All, um, all protecting f5. And many times, it's just an idea of uh, just opening lines, even if you have to sacrifice. All right. And the key is, is that bishop being going up for g7. And once that happens, white has to fight with all his might to get to that king. So g takes f5. G takes f5. Of course, not the bizarro knight takes f5. Because then, this, then you could just... Um, hold on, I almost said you could grab with your, your queen. Um, let's see, if knight takes f5 here... See, there's knight d5 work here this is a move I didn't consider um let's see d5 okay yeah queen yeah queen h3 is good knight d5 queen h queen h3 is just this um because this queen is unprotected on d7 there's no now the knight is actually threatened and then there will be uh nowhere to go so this is bad okay so this is why I know there was something funny about knight takes uh, knight takes f5 there. Okay, so g takes f5. Sorry about that. Like I said, I like I said in all the videos, I I don't use an engine or anything. And sometimes I didn't I didn't cons you know I didn't consider that particular consider like when I first looked at the game, I saw I saw the idea and then I forgot I forgot what I had saw, so I had to like refine the move again so okay g takes f5 and now kuprachik plays the move queen f2 all right and why is this move powerful because normally right when you sacrifice a pawn or a knight or something to uh, go after the king right a lot of times, especially as lower rated players, we we think like we got every move has to be super forceful, right? Because we figure we gave up material, so we can't give our opponent any time to breathe. So quiet moves often are out of the question, right? A lot of players make that mistake. They think that, okay, I've sacrificed a pawn, so I have to go 100 miles an hour. But it's not always like that. So here you see just a, a quiet move, queen f2. So what's the idea behind queen f2? It's simply to play queen d4 check. And what that does is it forces um, black to play this move f6. Okay. Right. Just, just getting more weakness created in the black position. That's it. Nice quiet move. So king h8. Now we see knight c5. Attack the queen. And notice that the rook is opposing the queen here. So pawn takes is out of the question. And of course, if rook takes, then just queen takes 
on c5. So queen c6, bishop is taken, knight takes b7, queen takes b7, and now there it is, queen d4 check, f6. And the problem is, is if he does like a move like that, then this rook will come up here. Rook d3 and then rook g3. All right. So this is why f6 is pretty much forced. Now, look at this setup right here. You got bishop on g2 and the queen on b7. Again, I always talk about opposition in my other videos. Right? It's always dangerous when you have situations like that because you had discover discoveries and all type of tactical um, fireworks are possible. So here, f6, and now look what you got. Boom, e5. Okay, now, so now you have this uh, discovered attack on the queen. Black plays f takes e5. Bishop takes b7. E takes d4. Bishop c8. And now you can see the game is just over. He takes b2. And just simply rook d6. Okay, so after all of these exchanges, you can see clearly that uh, white is just uh, winning here. But I'll just continue with the rest of it. So knight g6, bishop came here, knight f4, rook c2. This is really the only dangerous thing in the position. So black, of course, is going to try to hold on to that. And white is going to try to simply make sure that pawn isn't going anywhere and then push his a pawn okay and if you, if you see that pawn is just moseying on up the board rook g8 king to f1 again you got to be focused, like, if king h1, you get this new knight h3 with the idea of playing knight f2 check. And there's no way to get out of it, right? Because there's two threats. One is knight f2 check, and the other is just rook g1. That's the other, and that's mate. So you see why black played on. It's all dangerous to, with the knights, you know. Especially in time trouble. So after knight e3. I'm sorry. Yeah, knight e3. Let me put the king back in the right spot first. Okay, so king. Sorry, but the king f1. Now knight e3. Knight e3 check. King f2. And he gets the rook back. Knight takes c2. But then, rook b8. And what do you do about this pawn here? So that saved the day for uh, for white. And black had to resign. So that was a good game between two uh, very strong uh, players. And I just want to go to like the key points of the game here. Again, uh, G4, the setup was very powerful. Again, you see the main themes, notice. And there's more than one way to uh, skin a cat. And what I mean in this particular instance is that with this trade of the bishop on D4, it didn't happen the traditional way where you have queen D2, bishop E3, bishop H6, and so on. Nope, it was done like this. Right, but notice how quickly and rapidly Black's position uh, declined after the bishop was traded off and f5 was played. Very important, very important themes uh, in the position. So that is it for this video. Again, like, subscribe. Links down below with the uh, DVDs and or books. Please donate if you. Uh, feel so inclined i would greatly appreciate that um any questions comments uh leave them down below and um 
we are going to be looking at another exciting game uh, in the next video. We're still dealing with the line uh, beginning on move 6, F4, and E6. And we have a, uh, let me see, we ha yeah, we have exactly two more games in that line. And we're going to be looking at the great Boris uh, Spassky, uh in our next game. And um, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah, all of these games are, like, right on the playlist. You know, because we're we're going we're discussing the whole, uh, you know, the whole uh, world of the closed Sicilian. So that if you want to play it, come coming from the white perspective, all you got to do is uh, look at these videos, and uh, you you should be ready to go. Okay, so hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one.